five mini plays after Daniel Carnes. An unsuccessful library. It is morning, the library is opening. David Smythe walks in to borrow some books, but the li at the library desk there's only a woman wearing a smoking jacket wearing his name at the desk. Hello, I would like to take out these books. I'm afraid that won't be possible. How so? I understood this to be a library. I have taken books out from here on numerous occasions. <laughs> I'm afraid you're mistaken. That was one of your multiple selves, functioning in one of several parallel universes in which you dwell. I watched a program about it on the Discovery Channel. Many people experience this, so no need to be embarrassed for your mistake. What is this, some too big, crappy, surreal, absurd poem? <laughs> no, it's more of a mini play. Whether it's a two-bit poem is for the audience to decide. Perhaps you could ask them and it would be more like a pantomime. I always detested pantomimes. Well, I'm afraid I can't help that. Curtain. <laughs> Who is the author? I would like to borrow a book. Do you know which book you want? Yes, of course I know. That book had this kind of bluish, greenish cover, grayish, bluish, greenish, with a splash of reddish. Do you remember the title? Unfortunately not. And there was something whitish on the cover. <laughs> it will be difficult for me to find it. Do you know the author? The author? Yes, the author. Excellent question. Who is the author? I won't tell you. <laughs> we have thousands of blue and green books. Was it a poetry book? Oh no, for God's sake. <laughs> Do you know we specialise in poetry? Was, was it a novel or a non-fiction book? That could be fiction or non-fiction. This could be more helpful. I don't know if, if I can help you. Look, isn't it a seagull at the window? Where? <laughs> oh, well, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Don't you see this is a greyish, bluish, greenish book with splash of reddish and whitish? And who is the author? The author. The author is, is me, of course. <laughs> you have found the book you wanted, and I please take it and leave. I'd rather leave it here. It would be great for your library to have it. You see, cute cover, greyish, bluish, greenish, splash of reddish, whitish, and blackish. Just leave. <laughs> Will you date me again? I'm the author now. I have a book, cute cover, greyish, blackish, brownish. Oh, isn't it a penguin over there? Where? <laughs> I'm so sorry you had to see all that. This is a poetry library. Curtain. <laughs> a call from Grace at the National Poetry Library. A man of very high standing walks into the library to return some books. He still likes to go to the library. His nanny used to take him to the library when he was little. So although he can afford to buy as many books as he likes, he prefers the library. His nanny used to get him to memorize poems. He looks back at these days with great fondness. Instead of the librarian at the desk, an owl smoking a pipe is there. As it is usually his PA who returned the books, he is not sure if this is usual. Man of high standing. Um, hello, I would like to return these books. Owl smoking pipe blows smoke in his face. Man of high standing coughs. <coughs> Man of high standing splutter. I said, please, could I return these books? Behind him, a film of his various misdemeanors plays on a projector. Other people in the library stop digging around in the books and come over and start watching the film. They're really engrossed. The old hands out cigars and the man weeps falling to the ground. Poetry pamphlets are scattered on top of him as he slowly dissolves into the floor. Curtain. Curtain. <laughs> Librarian on Tinder. <laughs> Hello. Nice profile picture. 
thank you. Yours is nice too. Do you have any more photos? Sure, here you are. That's me by the apple tree. Thanks. Could you send me a new photo? <laughs> sure, here you are. <laughs> from behind. <laughs> yeah, sure, here you are. Thank you, that's lovely. Mm. And now a picture with your grandparents, please. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, I just need to find it. Yeah, here you go. Oh, your grandma looks hot. Thanks. Something more? Mm. <laughs> Could you send me a photo of you dressed as mushroom? Of course, here you are. <laughs> oh, with a nice hat. Mm. Thank you very much. By the way, have you saved your x-ray photos? I'm most interested in the lungs. The spine is also okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if I... Oh, this is the most recent one. Thanks. Uh, and now please a photo in a coffin. Here you are. No, no, with the lid closed. Oh yes, of course, I think this is the best. Thank you, nice. <laughs> By the way, I want to show you another photo. This is from the carnival. I'm dressed up like Niagara Falls. Oh my god. <laughs> It's so disgusting. How dare you send me something like that? You must be really sick. Psycho. Black. Okay. Turn my pages. A librarian stands in the aisle of the poetry library and begins having a conversation with the books as she normally does. It's a bit gossipy, and both her and the books feel a little bit dirty, as gossip about the, the books on the other aisles is a cheap thing to do. But it's what they enjoy, and a ritual, and a routine now on which they all depend. Please note that the names of the books in dialogue have remained anonymous in this poem play for their own protection. <laughs> Act 1, Scene 1, Book 1. Did you see how old and yellow the Eliot is looking now? Book two. That's nothing compared to Sylvia Plath. She's looking really tatty. Librarian. Shh. That is a form of sacrilege. You guys, please. She's loving it, really. Book three. I hear that old edition of E.E. E. Cummings got very huffy about the attention a new edition was getting the other day. Always got to be centre of attention, that one. Scene two. Further down on that aisle. Book four. Gertrude Stein and Emily Dickinson are starting to get very cozy. Libra librarian, have you been playing Cupid again? Well, someone's got to. Things were getting a bit incestuous on the shelves between the similar letters. The only excitement anyone gets is on the return shelves. Things get mixed up nicely then. I just leave them there a bit longer if I see magic occurring. Book four, crying. I would like to spend some time with some of the journals and magazines, but I know that is unlikely to happen. Librarian, <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Act 2, scene 1. Librarian discreetly takes the poetry review and the Rialto off the shelf and pops them on the returns shelf where book 4 is eagerly waiting. She sets the timer on her watch for 30 minutes and makes herself scarce. When she returns, the books and magazine are gone. And so is the returns shelf, and so is the library, and so is she. So we'd better not speak about her anymore. Curtain. Curtain.